Okay, next one, uh, Karl Berninghausen of uh, Sunfire. I think he is making new friends here at the event. I can observe. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jan. Um, yeah, I'm uh, talking about the carbon cycle um, and how we close it. The carbon cycle is a nature of uh, carbon and hydrogen. Um, we have a constant transition between carbon dioxide and water, which is the lowest energy state of carbon and hydrogen that can be found in nature. And uh, this is uh, constantly transformed by photosynthesis and loaded with energy from the sun to become uh, hydrocarbons, which we then in turn use. We exploit them from the from underground, we burn them for uh, power generation, for heat, and for mobility. And so the cycle goes down again to the water and carbon dioxide. Now this uh, cycle is broken because uh, we use up the reserves too fast. And with a broken cycle, we will uh, experience not only climate change, but we will see uh, fluctuating prices, we will see dwindling resources, political pressure, and um, that gives us some business opportunities if we can close this cycle again. Closing the carbon cycle gives basically three nice business options. Um, one is, uh, which we have just heard about it, it's the most uh, elegant if we just uh, be more efficient in the use of hydrocarbons, which means coming from oil or gas, which is uh, the natural form of hydrocarbons which we have. And if we want to use them more efficiently, we will need to not only generate power and electricity separately, we will do cogeneration, which is the more efficient process, and we have to go from the central operations to decentralized operations. If we want to do that, the most adequate technology to do that is the high-temperature fuel cell. The high-temperature fuel cell is a very efficient in small units, and it can be uh, even combined with uh, uh, remote control to virtual power plants. So we have the option with a high-temperature fuel cell to efficiently use our hydrocarbons. High temperature fuel cells do not need hydrogen. They can be run with uh, existing methane from the grid. So in the next opportunity which we have uh, would be then the back way, uh, which nature cannot do fast enough. And that could be, for example, we convert power to gas. We take water and uh, uh, carbon dioxide and convert them back to gas. Um, this has been discussed uh, for a long time already. Uh, it's a good opportunity to tackle the long-term storage necessities which we have, and it's also offering a separate way of transporting energy. Um, the question is, can we find a viable business model for this? And the success factor for power to gas will be the efficiency of the process and intelligent business models, and Sunfire can contribute. I will come back to that later. A third business opportunity would be power to liquids. Power to liquids means basically um, to produce a synthetic renewable fuel, like diesel or uh, gasoline, from electricity, carbon dioxide, and water, which means without uh, biomass. This is technologically very similar to power to gas. Uh, will probably take two years longer on the route to market and to industrialization, but it is rewarding because the product, the synthetic renewable fuel, is more valuable than renewable gas, of course. Uh, what comes in quite handy now for a company like Sunfire is that these three business cases can use one and the same core product, one and the same base technology, to address all these three business cases. We call it the solid oxide stack technology, and it is used in the high temperature fuel cell and in the high temperature electrolyzer. You can uh, imagine this like a rechargeable battery in the fuel cell mode. 
you put gas into the system and you get electricity out. And in the reverse mode, you take electricity, put it in, and you get gas out, hydrogen. So it's one and the same technology which can be used in these three business sectors. And that, of course, offers, first of all, more options for economies of scale. We can speed up the process. It gives us more options to prove the technology on the road to market. And it reduces, basically, the risk of our operation. Now, coming to Sunfire, I've been here the first time two years ago. We were four people, we had an idea, we had a business plan, we had a patent, and that was basically it. Um, well, today, we have uh, quite a different company. The highest value which we have uh, is our team. 51 people now, mainly engineers, highly professional, highly trained, highly committed, um, and which is especially nice. Um, the engineers have learned not to think in kilowatt, but to learn in euro. And today, I would say I could easily send at least 10 out of our team, 10 people of our team, out to uh, Japan, to Abu Dhabi, wherever, on, the, on an exposition to a big customer, and they would present our company there. That's how our engineers work today. Um, the second very strong point of our company now is the partnership with Bilfinger. Bilfinger maybe conceived as a building company, is a technology company today. And um, we do not only have Bilfinger as a, a valued shareholder. They are, together with KFW, holding about a third of our shares. The rest is still with the owners. And, uh, but they are te technological partners. So if we are approaching a customer today, it's always uh, a joint venture. We are supplying the core product. Uh, the layout, the software, and the patents. And Bilfinger is doing the detailed engineering until plant building and service. And that's a very strong joint venture, which is well received in the market. We have very strong customer relations. And um, we have customers in Far East, in Russia, all over Europe. Uh, right now, we focus on strategic customers, and we consider them more partners. Uh, because we do development together with them, we do uh, supply management together with them. Um, the lead customer, Vyland, for example, is um, presenting the common product from Sunfire and Vyland in the Calux field test very successfully. And uh, so we are a very, very close team and are proud of it. We do 5 million turnover uh, this year already. That's not too bad after two years. And, uh, from these 5 million, we have already 90% in the books for this year. So we are very happy about this. Um, we can cover our technology and our core product with uh, about 30 worldwide patent families. We have invested up till now some 9 million in equity and got some 5 million in grants. Um, and the best of it is half of that is still there. Uh, we expect to be cash break even by the end of next year. So uh, I think the Financial performance is also quite strong. Uh, the facilities that we have in Dresden, that's where we are located, as you can see here, are state of the art for production and for development. So I think we're all set now for the route to market and for the further way to success. Uh, the key success factor in this business is efficiency. Um, I should give you some more details in thermodynamics and enthalpies, but I will save that for today or give it in the foyer later on. But to make a long story, sto uh, long sh uh, story short, um, usually in the process of building gas or uh, fuel, there is a lot of waste heat going into the atmosphere. The Sunfire process can use this waste heat because we have the high temperature version of the electrolyzer that is totally different from what today can be bought from alkaline or PEM electrolyzers. And the recuperation of heat uh, makes our process a lot more efficient. And our patent covers exactly this. And the core product which we have is exactly the high temperature electrolyzer. Now, what does it lead to? It's not only just efficient for itself. But if you understand that, for example, to create one kilowatt hour of gas, we would need 1.3 kilowatt hours of electrical power, while state of the art would need 1.7. That's a big difference. And that difference 
is accounting for the fact that we can really buy the electricity for our process. We can buy baseload. And that, in turn, means we do not have to wait for cheap excess power, which is a risky business model, and we can run our facility as long as we want. We can do baseload operation. We can run over 7,000 hours a year at least, and we do not have to wait for a free lunch. And that, in turn, gives us two advantages. First of all, we can produce a lot more gas for the same capex, for the same capital expenditure. And secondly, we have a second source of income because the new legislation in Germany, since we are lacking control power, we are lacking peak power, um, is that if you have a baseload operation and you can offer to the grid manager to turn that down to do energy shedding, uh, which is basically going into idle mode during the peak time, and uh, then you get well paid for this release of energy. So we have always two sources of income and a very strong use of our capital. And that is basically the consequence of our high efficiency technology. Now, this could also be the role business model for uh, 70,000 biogas plants in Germany, because they are seeking a new business model. We could probably help them to create a lot of valuable renewable gas, plus become a peak load supplier in the grid without any additional storage facility. So that is a very interesting approach and probably gives us a lot of customer base. The same principle applies also to, power, power, to liquids, which means uh, creating fuel instead of gas. Uh, except that for power to liquids, the final product will be more valuable, and we have some additional very nice business prospects. What you see here is the first power to liquid demo plant, which will go in, uh, into operation uh, by the beginning of next year, and you're all invited to come and, and uh, see it. Uh, I think that would be quite a, a milestone in the development of Sunfire. And I'm happy uh, to invite you to somehow accompany us in the process. Thank you very much. Great pitch. Thank you very much, Carl, for being here.